So now it's go for today is going to be dressing a resonant with a weak arm. So this is on page 71. Those of you who want to play along with your book, go to page 71. Mm -hmm. So privacy blankets are a whole lot more important than, than we seem to think that they are most of the time. It's not just about, you know, pulling the curtain is not enough privacy for the patient. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially because we're in there with them. <laughs> so we have to keep them private from us as well. So keep yeah. that in mind. Anytime the patient is uncovered or undressed, we will use a privacy blanket. And when we put it on, we put it on over the sheet and then just pull the sheet down underneath. And it's also the last thing that we remove from the bed. Um, and we usually have to clean up our area, put our dirty linens away, clean out our basin if we're using one, and then remove our gloves if we're wearing it before we remove that privacy blanket. Because remember, when you remove that blanket, you've got to pull up the sheet so the patient doesn't get cold. If you've got soiled gloves on, you don't want to touch that sheet that's going to go right up next to their face with dirty gloves on. So the privacy blanket is usually the first thing to go on, but the last thing to come off. So let's take a look at our care plan on page 71. So here's our care plan for dressing a resident with a weak arm. And it says dress the resident in a long sleeve button or snap front shirt. Now I'm gonna stop there for a second because we talked about this early this morning. Remember that if the care plan says long sleeve, it doesn't matter what the temperature is, the nurse has a reason for wanting long sleeves. But it also says snap or button front, and I wanna talk about that really quickly. If a patient has a weak arm, we tell the family or the patient, go get shirts that button or snap up the front. So front closing garments because it's way easier to get somebody dressed side to side if they have uh, arm limitations, mobility issues, than it is top to bottom. Because when somebody's putting on a pullover shirt, they have to be able to extend their arms up or out to get dressed appropriately. When you have somebody with mobility issues, that may not be possible. So by helping them get dressed side to side with a front closing garment, you can literally just slide the garment up the arm that has a mobility issue and it doesn't have to move much at all. So if the patient has had shoulder um, surgery or has a shoulder injury, or maybe it's had a stroke and one side is paralyzed, there's a lot of reasons that somebody might have one-sided weakness or mobility issues, then we're going to be dressing them in things that fasten up the front. So this care plan tells us to use a button or snap front shirt. Then it goes on to say pants and socks. Notice it does not say anything about undergarments for this skill. For the test, we are not putting undergarments on this patient. And in a clinical setting, you will go by whatever your care plan indicates for that patient. Maybe the patient already has undergarments on, that's a possibility. Or maybe they just don't, um, they have a brief on but don't want a bra on. It, we don't really know why the, the care plan says what it says. And truthfully, we don't care why the care plan says what it says. We're just going to follow it. So it says, button or snap front shirt, pants, and socks. The resident is lying in bed and has a weak right arm. A weak right arm. That's going to be important to us in a second. Then it says the resident is not able to help with dressing, and after dressing them, leave the resident in bed. So let's look at the bottom of the page here. This care plan for somebody with your level of ability should take about 14 minutes to complete. For the test, you will be doing this on a mannequin, and that mannequin will be laying in bed. So we know where the patient is, we know who the patient is, and we know how long this should take. Now there's a lot of steps involved in this, but the one that I wanna to bring to your attention is right here, USA first. This saying right here, USA first. This is the most important part of this particular step-by-step um, -step instruction. And USA First actually stands for Undress Strong Arm First. Now when you do that, 
that allows the garment to just slide off that weak arm. We're making the stronger arm do all the movement. So that garment will just slide off that weak arm. Not a lot of motion required. And then we're gonna dress the weak arm first. So the new garment will just slide right on that weak arm without a lot of motion required. Okay, so that's, that's our care plan for this, for this skill. So our care plan for this skill tells us to dress the resident in a long sleeve button or snap front shirt, pants, and socks. Now, in a clinical setting, you're gonna ask the patient, what do you wanna to wear today? Everybody has the right to choose their own clothing. Can you imagine some stranger coming into your house tomorrow and insisting that you wear an outfit that you don't like, that's not really what you had in mind today? I mean, we all wake up and we have like a, a mood or a, 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 an idea of what we want to wear. Now, most of us are at home now, right? So we're living in pajamas probably most of the time. But can you imagine just some random stranger off the street coming in and insisting that you wear something that you really didn't pick out for yourself? It would be awkward, it'd be odd. We can't do that for our patients either. So we wanna ask, what would you like to wear today? Now, most of the time, we're just gonna go with whatever they say, but sometimes your patients are going to describe something that obviously does not go together. If they say, I want my purple plaid pants, and my yellow polka dot shirt, and you know those things do not go together, you are allowed to suggest an alternative. You can say, hey Mary, your white shirt would go really nice with those purple plaid pants. Do you wanna try that? Now she may say, oh yeah, that's what I meant. Or she might say, no, I want my yellow polka dot shirt. You are allowed to suggest an alternative because you are actually judged on the way your patient looks. Now, if I'm walking down a hallway in a nursing home and I see lots of patients in wheelchairs lining the hallway and they're all dressed very nicely, their hair is all in place, everything is fastened appropriately, I'm going to think, wow, I've got really good CNAs. Now, if I walk down that same hallway and the patients are all in mismatched clothes and nothing is buttoned properly and their hair is all messed up, do I have good CNAs? Probably not because they aren't taking pride in their patient's appearance. So you are actually judged on the way your patients look. Now, because of that, you are allowed to make suggestions. Mary, would you like your white shirt with those plaid pants? You can make a suggestion, but we're ultimately going to honor their wishes. So if they say, no, I want my yellow polka dot shirt, you're gonna say, no problem, let me get that for you. And we'll dress them in what they had asked to wear because we don't know their motivation. Maybe their son and their daughter are both coming to visit today and the son bought those pants and the daughter bought that shirt. Even though they don't go together, that mama is going to honor both of her children for buying her those, uh, those items of clothing. So we don't know what the patient's motivation is, and that's okay. We can suggest an alternative, but honor their wishes. Now, for the test, they're going to make this super easy on you. They're simply going to, when you ask the patient, what do you want to wear today? Remember, this is a mannequin skill. So you're going to ask the mannequin, what do you want to wear today? And the evaluator is going to give you an answer. Now the evaluator is going to de de um, describe an outfit that's on that uh, clothing rack. So remember that clothing rack or the, the supply rack over there? So the evaluator is going to describe an outfit on that rack. So you need to find that outfit. And it's, it's usually very simple. It'll either be my blue long sleeve shirt and blue pants or my red long sleeve shirt and red pants. So they make it really, really easy for you. But if you're unsure, just hold them out to the patient. Remember, you're always talking to the patient, not the, not the evaluator, always talking to the patient. Hold them out to the patient and say, is this what you um, had wanted? Is this what you described? And the evaluator will tell you yes or no. So the biggest things to remember here is USA first, undress strong arm first. That means you gotta know which arm is the weak arm. 
So we're gonna undress strong arm first, dress weak arm first. Now the rest of it doesn't matter what order. If you wanna start at the socks, that's fine. If you wanna start with the pants, go for it. If you wanna start with a shirt so you don't forget USA first, knock yourself out. Nobody cares whether it's shirt first, pants first, socks first, that doesn't matter. It's when you get to the shirt, it's USA first. Okay, so I'm going to show you this skill. Now remember when this is a mannequin skill, any mannequin skills for the test, the evaluator is going to play the voice of the mannequin. So you're going to talk to the mannequin as if she's a real person. You do not talk to the evaluators. They are not there to interact with you. They are there just to play the voice of the mannequin and to check off the steps that you do properly. So you don't talk to the evaluators, you talk to the mannequin because that's how they're going to grade that indirect care. You do want to talk to the patient, though, for this skill. I know she's a doll, but you still want to talk to her. You need to explain what you're doing. Can you imagine how awkward it would be if a stranger came into your home tomorrow morning and did not talk to you and started taking your clothes off? How awkward would that be? Even if you knew they belonged there, you knew they were there to do a job, it would still be horribly awkward right? Most of us would probably react by hitting first. So it's important that we understand that all of the, the stuff that we say to the patient, all of that indirect care, all of the explanations we give are there to increase the trust between caregiver and patient. And they can't trust you if they don't know you. You've got to talk to them, okay? So the care plan told us that at the end of the skill, this patient was going to remain in bed. So that's what they did. I just left the patient in bed. Now you can ask if they want their sheet up, but usually once somebody is fully dressed, they don't really want their sheet on, but you can ask if you'd like. In a clinical setting, usually if we're getting somebody dressed, that means that they're most likely getting out of bed, but that's a different skill and that's not going to be reflected on the care plan for the test. So for the test, it'll tell you the patient once clothed will remain in bed. Any questions? When during the test, are you supposed to explain like every detail you're doing as, as versus to in real life to the patient? You should, you should. And how do I put this? You're being graded on it as well for the test, but even in a clinical setting, you really should because remember, they have no idea what the next step you're about to do is. And the, it, it's very frustrating for patients to have to accept help to begin with. But if they don't know what you're actually doing, um, they can be a little bit resistant. Um, it just gives your patient more trust in you, more confidence, but it helps them participate in care as well. So if you go to, if you remember my website, so let me share my screen with you to show you what I mean by this. So remember I said that I have a lesson for pretty much everything online. This is one of those. This is in the online course and the video is called, do I have to talk it out? And this is specifically for that question. Um, you know, why do I have to say all of these steps out loud? And what do I have to say for the state exam? Because it's going to help you understand both sides of this clinical practice and the test as well. All right. Any questions? No question, I but I, yes, sorry. Yes, I noticed when you were doing it on the person, you, you were not wearing gloves. You were not wearing hand gloves. Right. That is correct. We're going to talk about that in depth on Wednesday. Okay. We're going to talk about that. You do not need to wear gloves for everything for the test, and you should not wear gloves for everything for the test. But on Wednesday... I will explain to you when you're supposed to wear gloves and when you're not and what the consequences of wearing gloves all the time without really thinking about it, what those consequences are. So we're going to talk more about gloves in depth on Friday or on Wednesday. Yeah, that's a very good observation. For those of you who just cannot wait until Wednesday, you can, if you have your book, your book, Turn to page 26 in your book, and it will tell you all about that. And I have a video online, too, in the animated section um, or in the, the courses section on do I need to wear gloves. So that topic is covered in the online course 
and in the book as well. But we're going to cover it in class on Wednesday. <music>